All right, YouTube, it is Mr. Mean coming at you this fine, oh, what is it? It's a, uh, Saturday, I'm um, Saturday at 6.45 p.m. I hope everyone is doing well. I wanted to take a moment to record a video. Apologize if the audio goes wonky there. Um, I have my Rode wireless microphone there that I love. Um... So, as many of you know, first of all, as always, like and subscribe. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, to steal a phrase from Dave2D, a uh, very popular tech YouTuber that I really like, because he's a Mac fanboy, um, but he likes PCs as well. But anyway, I digress. Um, I'm on the Pathfinder auto subscription, uh, I think it's the GM auto subscription. So what that means is, whenever they release a new book that they consider a GM book um i get a copy uh they charge my credit card on file and they ship it to me uh and it's usually a couple about ten dollars more than the cover price that include that's the shipping and handling and um usually upon shipping um they give me access to the pdf now i'm not here to say that the uh, subscription model is right for you or not. It works for me because I don't have a local game store that I can just run to, uh, you know, that's 10 minutes away. The closest decent gaming store I have is two and a half hours away in Minneapolis. I'm in Duluth, uh, so in Minnesota. So that's a, it's a little bit of a trek just to go buy a $60 book. Uh, so I typically make a trip to the cities every two to three months uh the volvo dealership is down there and that's where i have to go and get my car maintenance and stuff because uh, again there's no volvo uh authorized volvo dealership up here in duluth which is fine um i love my volvo so i'm willing to make that drive and we make a weekend out of it next weekend we're going we're spending the weekend uh or no next weekend we're on a camping trip the following weekend we are going to Minneapolis to get our cars serviced. My wife and I both drive Volvos. But anyway, again, I digress. I'm not here to say whether or not the Pathfinder subscription uh, program is right or wrong for you. It works for me for the reasons I stated before. Um, and I like getting the PDF. Now, sure, I could pirate the PDF. I mean, it, geez, the PDFs are available on, on a lot of different pirated sites within hours of the moment it releases. Um, and people go to great links. You can Google it and see how to remove the watermark from a PDF. I mean, it's to me, it's just not worth the effort. You can typically buy Paizo's PDFs. I think it's $25 they charge for the PDF. Don't quote me on that, but it used to be 20 It used to be $19.99, but they raised the prices. Um, that's another rant. Uh, I have my opinion on the whole PDF pricing uh, scheme because I do feel that it's pure profit. I know there's friends of mine and stuff that work in the industry that would disagree, and that's fine. Uh, opinions are like assholes. We all have one. Um, but that being said, the subscription model works well for me because, like I said, I get the physical book. Um, they ship it very, very well packaged, um, and then they turn around and they give you the PDF as soon as the, as the book is available um, or whenever they make the street date available, which is usually about a week before I physically get said book in my hand. So what I wanted to talk about today was Pathfinder 2nd Edition uh, Howl of the Wild. Um, I got this in the mail last week, week and a half ago. I finally had a chance to kind of go through it. Um, hardback, full color, typical Paizo... Uh, perfection as far as the quality of the book um we're looking at 200 and uh 224 pages that includes a player core advertisement in the back <clears throat> um for those that don't know pathfinder just recently went through uh, an update like pathfinder 2.5 uh 2.7 um, if you want, where they basically the gist of it was to remove all OGL, and they took that opportunity to not only reprint the book, use their orc license, which is what they've com uh, committed to using, uh, and it will always be free if you wish to use it. And I will say, Paizo has done a great job of working with like the archives of Nethys, uh, a number of other websites out there, as well as Path Builder. 
um, and allowing third party people to do things and not necessarily charge them. Um, Path Builder, I think, is a great example. I don't know what the young man that makes. I know it's one guy. Um, he makes a web interface that works on PC or Mac or Android, uh, or PC or Mac, iOS, or excuse me, bleh, I'm getting my terms, Windows or uh, Apple, it works, as well as on iOS or Android. Um, and it's a simple $5. You do have to pay for each platform uh, if you want to use it. So if you buy it on iOS and you want to use it on Android, you have to pay another $5. If you want to use it on the web, you got to pay another $5. So if you're a moron like me and you have every operating system known to man, you have to pay for it multiple times. But that's okay because I think it's worth it. Um, and of course, for the, and it's not a subscription, thank God. Uh, uh, it's a one-time fee. And he updates all the books as soon as they come out. And you know, I'm sure Paizo legally wanted to go after him and shut him down. They could, but they're cool. And, and, and I don't really think it's hurting them financially because while it does give a lot of information, you're still going to want the book to reference the deeper meaning of the material that's given. So they just give you a brief outline of whatever a talent or a feat or an ancestry is. If you want to read up more on that, you, you need the book. And so I think programs like that, Archives of Nethys, are encouraging you to get the book. Now, you don't have to buy the book uh, or books. Um, that's totally up to you. I believe in supporting a company that I enjoy. And I enjoy Paizo. Um, I like everything they do. Uh, some books are more, you know, more better uh, for me as a GM. I'm not a player. I've played Pathfinder, I think, once, maybe twice. Uh, I'm a GM, and I thoroughly enjoy running Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I love the three-action economy. I'm super excited for Starfinder 2.0 when it comes out. I'm hoping that they listen to the feedback of the audience, their audience, and they, they make it a little bit more of a serious game instead of the very campy fantasy sci-fi game that it was before in the previous edition, which was not to my liking. And I bought the books. I immediately returned them after I read through them in a day. or It was about a week, uh, but luckily the game store I bought it for took returns. So I was able to get my money back. So anyway, um, Howl of the Wind. What is this? Well, this is your nature source book. Um, I would say this is a player source book predominantly, but then again, there's a bestiary in here, and it takes out a good half of the book, maybe slightly more, um, of just new monsters, um, and not necessarily adversaries, but just a bestiary of creatures. There's like familiars and animal companions, um, and there's a plethora of all of it. It's written from the point of view of Baran Thet, who is an Iguanodon, or an Iguana, uh, whatever that race is called. The Athamaru, I believe? Nope. It is the... Uh, I think they're the the uh, they're an, uh, he's an awakened iguana or a, a, a mammalian iguana doesn't really awakened animal rare yeah um, but he walks like a man he looks like a man he's uh, is he on the cover yeah he's on the cover right there it's this guy right here um, and of course all the new uh, uh, ancestries are here because you can the, about the only one that I find that would be useful to me is the minotaur. Um, and even then, I'm a little, meh. Now, those who have watched the channel in the past know that I'm a huge fan of the... Um, um, oh, and I don't even know where the book is now. It's, um, it's the D&D 5th edition version. Jeez, uh, I'm not going to be able to find it now because I've moved all my books and I don't know where everything is. Uh, God. It's the it it mixes Viking and Norse Norse mythology with uh, D and D mythology. I can't think of the name of it right now, but it was done by Cobalt Press. It's phenomenal, um, and they have Minotaurs in that game as a standard race. Uh, but this introduces were creatures as well. So if you got a player that wants to play a werewolf or a, a were jackal or a were moose, yes, you heard me right. I live in the land of mooses, so is is. Silly as I think it is, I can totally see one of my players. I have five players, and they're all native to Minnesota and northern Wisconsin. So I could see one of them wanting to play a were-moose because it's part of the culture here. Um, so that being said, I do believe this is primarily a 
a player resource book, except for the section that has the bestiary in it. Uh, there's quite a bit, and there's a lot of uh, spell catalyst and magic items. Uh, the book is very well uh, dispersed, um, but I would still say it's 75% player, 25% GM. I think if you're a GM, you don't need access to this, or maybe maybe just the PDF and your players might want the physical book for the new spells and the al alchemical uh, uh, stuff, as well as uh, Wild Mimic is an archetype. There's a whole bunch of new archetypes in here. There's a whole bunch, not a whole bunch, there's like five new ancestries. Uh, the the Cirque, or Reptilian, or not Reptilian, Insectoid, um, I just, it makes no sense to me. It's like somebody watched too much of the new Teen Titans or whatever that um, animated uh, series, I think it was the new Teen Titans, but, you know. Um, is it bad? No. They're, they're not... They don't get, I mean, they get hit points, they're size medium, they have a speed of 25. Um, uh, they, they, they make really good mages or sorcerers because they draw in magical energies. Um, there's a bunch of new heritages. Um, it's just not for me. I'm just going to say that. It, there's a lot of wonkiness in here uh, for, the, for the archetypes that I just won't allow in my game. That's just me. Um, but I do like the new uh, Warden spells and Ranger options. I do have a Ranger in my game, uh, an Elven uh, Archer, basically. Uh, but uh, he's a Ranger. So some of this stuff in here would, would be uh, applicable to him. And he is leaning more towards the magical side of Ranger. So I think this would, would kind of work uh, for him. Uh, but, and you know, like I said, I'll go over it. Um, I want to say there's a cantrip in here that I read that I just think is amazing. And it's a cantrip, which is the part that kills me. Scrounger's Glee. This is a single action. It's a cantrip, so it's a spell like... It's uncommon, auditory, cantrip, concentrate, fear, hex, mental, and witch. So witches obviously can cast hex spells. And then hex spells are a type of spell that other classes can get access to. But it says uh, patron is the devourer of decay. So that these are the requirements. You have to be a follower of the... De devourer of decay range is 30 feet that's typical T uh, targets one creature defense is a will save uh, duration is sustained up to one minute so in combat that is an eternity uh, but it is concentrate so obviously you, can't, you have to drop it if you want to do something else or make a concentration check which could be hard if you don't have the applicable feats but here's the here's the awesome part um, let me not block the microphone hopefully i didn't just drown myself out with a cruel laugh and a flash of your canines, you make a target understand that death is coming to claim it and that its demise will serve to strengthen another. The target becomes frightened one if it fails a will save or frightened two on a critical failure. This condition can't be reduced below one while the spell is active and the target can hear you. You can dismiss the spell as a reaction when an ally critically succeeds at a strike against the target, restoring 1d4 hit points to that ally. Now, heightened, plus 2, a number of hit points restored when you dismiss the spell increases by 1d4. So, not only do you get hit points, yeah, it's only 1d4. I mean, again, you could only get one hit point back, but wow, one hit point. This is... Pathfinder is a game of inches. Uh, every plus one, minus one really matters in this game. And it can be the difference between a critical and just a regular hit. So I just think this spell is super cool. Because, um, you know, with a cruel laugh and a flash of your canines, you make a target understand that death is coming to claim it. I mean, it's, it's just in intent right there as I'm going to kill you. Um, and I just, it really speaks to me. I don't know. I, my nickname is Mr. Mean, so go figure. But, uh, and the piece of art underneath it is um, pretty cool. It's a, a hyena or a, a knoll rotting a piece of meat. Now, that's not the image that goes with that spell, but I just think it's pretty, pretty perfect. Uh, Devourer of Decay is your patron. Uh, so, pretty cool there. So, a lot of neat things in the book. The art, of course, is fantastic. There's no doubt about that. Hardback, <gasps> stitch sewn binding. Um, no ribbon in it. Uh, they typically, in their splat books, don't do ribbons. Um, this one has a slightly different cover color on the spine. I think that's to denote that it's uh, Pathfinder 2.5, basically. Um, 
it's a slightly different color than all the other books. In fact, here's, uh, and I don't know how well this will show up on the camera, but yeah, so the new book is kind of uh, green and the old book is blue and then you can see the spine color is uh, a lighter a lighter color um, so it sticks out and it the text is written in blue while the other book is written in kind of a reddish brown and I think that's to denote that it's a maybe a, a, a player book versus a GM book Monsters of Myth obviously clearly a GM book so that being said and I could be totally wrong there but I think that is the logic um, if you know for sure or definitively please post in the comments down below um, but um, I flipped through it and I was kind of at first I was like meh um, and then I started uh, where did my mind change it was right after the ancestries it is a, a fair amount of fiction in here um, each chapter is preceded by a, uh, a little a little you know a couple of pages from uh, the character's point of view of uh, Balfouret um, but uh, where was it it was after the heritages um awakened animals did not do anything for me um i get it but i just you know it does centaurs don't i don't think i would never run centaurs in my game unless i ran them as npcs uh merfolk again i think that's not useful unless you're playing an underwater campaign and the chances of having a group that all want to play an underwater campaign with only certain ancestries is going to be slim to none there's always going to be one player that's going to want to play a gnome now you're, you know, so I, 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 for those groups that want it, sure, cool, knock yourselves out. I just don't think it works in 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 my version of the game. Um, <clears throat> oh, uh, untamed morphs did not do anything for me. It's basically just uh, morphing yourself. Uh, there was a new muse for bards, the Zufonia muse, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, Claw Dancer was pretty cool. It's a new archetype. So this is anybody with uh, your cat folks of Tanzia or your were creatures. All of those guys could take these uh, could take these abilities. I think. Well, you got to be a Claw Dancer dedication. So and train. Most of them you have to be a Claw Dancer. So it does say Claw Dancer um, archetype. Um, swarm Keeper I thought was pretty cool. And they show a goblin, you know, with a swarm of bugs coming out of them. So uh, that one's kind of neat. Um, but the book didn't really grab me until the spells section, which starts on page 84. And I really got a pretty kick, a good kick out of the spells. Um, Frog Tongue, uh, Summon Stampede, Primal Chorus, a Hippocampus Retreat, Luring Whale, just a lot of cool things. Um, and then, of course, Animal Companions really grabbed me because I, I was glad to see that we're adding a bunch of new animal companions. Flying Squirrel, I thought was pretty cool. Kangaroo, uh, you know, just uh, neat stuff. Uh, giant Eel, these are advanced companions. Uh, giant Frog, uh, Giant Wasp, Hippocampus, uh, it was kind of like a, a Hippogriff, uh, an Orca, an Umbrella Mushroom. I mean, there's a Rock, 60, you gotta be at 16th level to get a Rock Companion. But, yeah, pretty cool stuff. And then there was graphs, which, again, if you're into that kind of thing, I'm not. But I could get it. It's and In order to do grafting, you have to be an expert in medicine and have the appropriate formula. Graft formulas can be purchased as outlined in the formula rules. Player core, page 294. Uh, you can take the graft technician feet below to implant graphs. And it's a level 3 feet. And that's a skill feat. And uh, you can create and implant graphs. So if that's something, if you got a player that wants to basically turn into Wolverine, you could do it. Um, if you want to give somebody gills, you could do it. So uh, they show the uh, Harsk, uh, which is the Dwarven Ranger, with an alligator tail. You could do it. I mean, as silly as it sounds, maybe it's not silly. If it, It's all what, it's your game. You do what you want. Just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you. Um, there's a plethora of magic items uh, and spells, and like I said, a, a very large bestiary in here. So, bang for the buck for me. This one's on the lower end, I'm not going to lie. Um, I do like a lot of the new spells, but they are very much, um, you know, 
uh, tailored to what's in this book, you know, Howl of the Wild, so rangers and animals and things like that. There's a lot of cool monsters in the uh, bestiary. Uh, not necessarily adversarial monsters, just creatures in the wild, because that's the theme of the book. Some of them, uh, nothing, I, I don't think I saw any that say evil on them. You know, they're just uh, mostly uncommon, and beast is the big thing around all of them. Rare, uh, for, I mean, there's griffins in here, there's hex worms, uh, hex moths, which the, the whole hex moth thing is pretty cool if you read up on that. Hold fast, uh, hoop a lamander, lamander, hoop, hoop lamander, um, uh, pretty cool. I mean, just a bunch of neat creatures. They do, um, some of the more mythological creatures, so like your hydra, your griffin, um, the, um, Bargast or, or Basilisk, they give like a two-page spread, almost like a, a, a encyclopedia a spread out of it and cultural impact and what they do. And I do like, I do like the the treatment that they gave some of these more pronounced uh, creatures in the wild and or monsters. But even even the Hydra is just a large beast, creature nine. I mean, this thing's going to give your party a fight for its money. Um, there's a mocking uh, mocking chorus. Among the many unique creatures of the inner sea, the Hydra is known as Mocking Chorus that stalked the river kingdoms, made the one most reviled. While as ferocious in direct combat as others of their kind, Chorus are a singular type of challenge for warriors that hunt them down, not due to their sharp teeth, but instead a sharp and subtle tongue. So, yeah, I mean, cool saying. The other thing I thought was uh, Mammoth Land Star. I mean, it's, it's uh, over here. Uh, pretty freaking cool. I, I read the whole entry, and I was like, wow, I could see that challenging a party. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff in here. If you're a GM, I don't know if you need this book. If you're a player that's into the ranger or furries or, you know, animal companions, this is a buy. Um, for every GM out there, I don't know if it is. Um, I do have the ability with the Pathfinder scripts from subscription. They do tell me what's coming out. It's up to me to go look, uh, but they do always say what the next book is coming, and I can pause my subscription to sh skip that book and get the next book. I just didn't do it for this one. I, maybe I should have. Um, but I do have a ranger in my party, so they may want to look at this and be interested in some of it. I don't know. I clearly will make it available to them. I just don't think him being an elven ranger, this is going to have a lot that's applicable to him because he's mostly with a bow. Uh, and uh, But he does do some magic, so maybe some of the magic in here will appeal to him at, for his character. Um, but like I said, is it a buy for every GM? I don't think so. Um I think you should maybe look at it, you know, go look at it in your local game store or if a, a fellow friend GM has it, maybe look at theirs and see if it's worth the bang for the buck for you. I mean, we are talking, it's sixty four ninety nine, and this is only not even 300 pages. So the cost of books has gone up amazing. This used to at one time would have probably been twenty nine ninety nine just a, a year ago. Uh, a year and a half ago, this would have been twenty nine ninety nine, or at worst thirty nine ninety nine. So it is pretty much doubled in price. Uh, but that being said, like I said, I'm glad I have it. Um, oh, and they, uh, it is part of the uh, Responsible Forestry Program uh, FSC. So they are using recycled paper where they can and products and stuff like that. So. Uh, and it's a mix of recycle and paper, uh, recycled paper and normal paper. So that's cool. Um, and like I said, I'm a fan of Paizo. So I, am I upset that I got this? No. Is it something I'm going to use a lot? Probably not. There's one or two like that mammoth, uh, star land starfish that might make an appearance in my game. Cause I just think it's too cool. Um, but griffins and stuff, who, who doesn't want more information on those? Uh, you know, you get a, a champion who's going to want to mount event, eventually a griffin. You know, the, I, the possibilities are endless. It's a role-playing game, and it can go in any direction. So I'm glad to have the resource in my library. Um, if I saw it on the shelf and I didn't get it as part of a subscription, would I buy it? Probably not. That's just me. Um, or I would go buy it when I had a need for it. And knowing me, I would just buy the PDF because I'm like, well, I don't need the physical book taking up space. But like I said, I'm on the auto ship program. I chose not to skip it, so it's on me. Um, 
I'm happy it's in my library. It looks good on the shelf, of course, um, and I, my Pathfinder section is, is pretty large. So, all things being said, I think that's my thoughts on it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. As always, uh, if you liked it, give a thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe. Uh, spread the uh, Meanie Army. Um, we have a very active Discord. Uh, many publishers are on there. Um, you know, pop in, say hi, whatever. Um, we are getting a lot of spam accounts, though, so if I... If you join the channel, I'm going to send you a message saying hi. If you don't reply, you get the band hammer. Uh, it's just because we get so many. And if you leave those unaccounted accounts for, they're just trying to see if they can get access to your account. And then they try to hijack it and do all kinds of bad things. So <clears throat> I want to avoid all that if I can. So um, I hope that was informative and you liked it. Um, hopefully it, let me know if it sways your opinion to buy this book or not. Uh, YouTube algorithm is killing me because there's not enough engagement. Um, so I beseech you to put my videos on in the background, turn the volume down, just let them play. Uh, especially if you're on unlimited bandwidth, just let them play in the background. Uh, you know, it, it, it won't hurt my feelings, let's put it that way. Um, if you could leave a like and a, and a comment on the video, that would be great because that's what YouTube algorithm is looking for they're looking for uh community engagement for me responding back to your replies so pop in there say hi you hated it you liked it you loved it you can't stand it you never want to see this book again whatever i appreciate any and all comments as long as they're constructive uh, other than that as always peace and hair grease and remember mr mean says be nice